back to the gridiron expert. As we always say, our main focus on this channel is and always will be dedicated to college football, but today we are making a special exception and also fulfilling a promise, bringing you our 2019 NBA playoff predictions. I asked you guys a lot on the live streams if you wanted to see these predictions, and we had a resounding answer. And so here we go, starting off with the Eastern Conference with the number one seeded Milwaukee Bucks taking on the eighth seeded Detroit Pistons. And we're just going to dive right on in here. We're going to talk with the Pistons first, and I will say this. I am a huge fan of Dwayne Casey uh, in Detroit. Now, I think he got kind of kind of shorthanded. I think he got booted too early in Toronto. They weren't able to take care of business there. Of course, always fall into the Braun uh, and, and the Cavaliers, but really no one was able to take care of the Braun and the Cavaliers uh, during his time there, except for the Warriors, of course. I think he got booted too early, but he did a phenomenal job with Detroit this year, getting them back to the playoffs for the first time since the 2015-2016 season, getting them right at 500, 41 and 41. It was a very close race between the Pistons, the Hornets, and the Miami Heat to clinch that final spot in the Eastern Conference playoffs. So kudos to him. They got a very bad draw, though, facing off against the Bucks here with arguably the uh, MVP of the NBA, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He, he would be getting my vote. I know many people think it's between him and James Harden with the Rockets, but Giannis deserves that award, uh, I think, more than anybody else in the league right now, and he has practically been unstoppable. The Bucks, a very young team. Giannis, a very young star, but have a lot of talent to potentially make a run all the way to the NBA Finals. Now, the problem for the Milwaukee Bucks are that they have not been past the opening round of the playoffs since 2001. But I can assure you that's going to change this year. Now, the Pistons have plenty of talent with Blake Griffin, Reggie Jackson, Andre Drummond, plenty of size. But this year, this is a very different team uh, for the for Milwaukee. They have a lot of talent, a lot of young talent. They should take care of the Pistons fairly easily, probably winning this one. If it's not a sweep, if it's not a 4-0 sweep, at least probably in five games. And they will take on the winner of the Celtics and Pacers, which is going to be a very, very intriguing series. And the Celtics, you know, were a team that many people thought were going to be the champions of the East, or at least clinch that one seed in the East, especially after LeBron's departure to the Lakers. But they kind of didn't live up to expectations. They were very inconsistent this season. Now, I know they battled some injuries here and there, but I will tell you this. I talked about how much I love Dwayne Casey up in Detroit. I am a bigger fan of Brad Stevens and the Celtics. And something to be said for this, even though the Celtics are a four Fourth seed, if you clinch the fourth seed uh, in the East, it would not surprise me to see the Celtics make a run at least to the Eastern Conference Finals and maybe all the way to the NBA Finals. Brad Stevens, a phenomenal coach. They are a very experienced team. This is a team that nearly went to the NBA Finals last year, nearly beat. Uh, LeBron James and the Cavaliers. They're going to have to rely on Kyrie Irving, Jalen Brown, and Gordon Hayward. Of course, they're going to be without Marcus Smart. If they can beat the Pacers, uh, they're going to have to be without him for this series and uh, probably the uh, series against the Bucks as well uh, as he is battling an injury. So that's a big loss for them. But I think the Celtics should be able to take care of the Pacers. And my mind would be changing on this series if the Pacers had Victor Oladipo. Had he not gotten injured earlier in the season, I would maybe be leaning a little more towards Indiana's way here, especially with the inconsistent play of the Celtics. But Boston, a very talented team, a very well-coached team, should be able to take care of the Pacers in at least five or six games uh, in this series. Moving down to the bottom half of the bracket here, we have the three-seeded Philadelphia 76ers and the six-seeded Brooklyn Nets. A major surprise this year, uh, not just in the Eastern Conference, but in the entire NBA. And we'll, we'll start with the 76ers first, a team that uh, has the chance to, if they can get past Brooklyn, potentially upset the Raptors or the Magic, but more than likely the Raptors, uh, in the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. The 76ers uh, getting a huge uh, boost in Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler uh, through free agency there. Of course, you're going to pair them up with a sharpshooter in J.J. Reddick, Ben Simmons, uh, very powerful there, and then Joel Embiid. So, uh, you know, trust the process, as the 76ers have said, and you really have to trust it. After winning a series last year against the Heat uh, before falling in the second round, the Sixers are back with a high seed and a chance to maybe make a run all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. So this is a very talented 76ers team. But I will say this. If there is one team, you know, the NBA playoffs are usually fairly straightforward. You don't see too many upsets because it is a best of seven series for every round. But if there's one Cinderella team that you could maybe have, it is going to be these Brooklyn Nets. And I will tell you why. D'Angelo Russell. Obviously, first time all-star for him. He is the reason for the Nets' success this season. He has been unbelievable. D'Angelo Russell paired up with Spencer Dinwiddie, two phenomenal shooters. Uh, th this is a Nets team that if they can kind of exploit some weaknesses in the 76ers defense, could make a run at least to the next round, 
probably before falling to the Raptors, uh, as we were predicting here. But the Nets uh, really surprised a lot of people, have a lot of young talent, making their first playoff appearance since 2015. Would not be surprised at all to see them pull off an upset here against the 76ers. But I'm going to take Philadelphia in this one to advance to the second round. And we do have them facing off against the Raptors, who I think should take fairly easy care of the Magic. They finished the year, though, uh, the Magic, towards the end of the year, 22-9 and nine since January 29th. So the Magic, you don't want to face a team that's getting hot. They finished the season very strong. So that's always a dangerous thing uh, and something to worry about for any team. But the Raptors, too much talent and too much uh, experience. Kawhi Leonard, Pascal Siakam, uh, who should be one of the most improved players of the year, and then Kyle Lowry as well. And then they got that addition in that trade, trading Jonas Valanciunas down to Memphis and getting uh, Mark Gasol. This is a big-time gift for the Raptors, a team that uh, last year uh, had a lot of promise, couldn't get there uh, to the NBA Finals. This year had their sights set on that, especially with, I wouldn't say a weaker Eastern Conference, but a lot of the talent that has been taken out. The Raptors have their eyes set on it. I think they get an easy uh, series win over the Magic to advance to round two. So then we've got our final four here. Of course, the one through, through the four seed. Not many upsets. Bucks and Celtics. Can the Celtics defense shut down Giannis? Giannis Antetokounmpo. I don't think they can. This series will go back and forth. The Celtics will steal a couple games in this one. I believe these two teams did meet last year in the NBA uh, playoffs. But the Bucs will get the better of Boston this year. And unfortunately, an early out for Brad Stevens and his squad, a team that did have their eyes set on making the NBA Finals, especially after the uh, getting so close one game away from getting there last year. But the Bucs just have too much talent. And they have been so dominant this year. They have won 45 games this season by double figures. Now, I'm not necessarily saying they will do that against the Celtics in this round, but I do think they do have enough talent and enough experience to get past the uh, Celtics and get to the Eastern Conference Finals. And then you have the Raptors and the 76ers facing off for a date against the Bucks, And we're going to take the Raptors here. And a lot of that, you know, I know they have a new head coach. And I know uh, the 76ers, you know, disappointed after the way things ended last year. Certainly building something there. The key is, though, can Jimmy Butler get going? Because, you know, we, we know all about Joel Embiid. We know all about Ben Simmons. But... I think the Raptors' defense is going to be able to hone in on them enough. Jimmy Butler is going to have to get going and provide that extra spark that they brought him to Philadelphia for. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. He's been there for long enough and has contributed well enough. But I think the Raptors, I set on the finals, get past the 76ers in a, game that, in a series that could go to seven games to take on the Bucks. And we're going a little bold here. We are picking the Raptors to advance to the NBA Finals. And as I have stated previously, it comes down to experience. This is a Raptors team that, you know, battling the Bucks up until the very end for potentially getting that number one seed in the Eastern Conference. The Bucks, as talented as they are, with, with Giannis and, and, and Brogdon, if they can come back and healthy, and that's the biggest thing for the Bucks right now, is making sure they have their health. Adding Brooke, Brooke Lopez as well, not only a strong defensive threat, but a guy that can shoot well from beyond the three-point line. This is a Bucks team that I think a lot of people would not be surprised to see make the NBA Finals. But the Raptors, I think there's something to be said for their experience, for Kawhi Leonard and the defense that he plays, for Siakam and the improvement that he has shown, especially on the defensive side of the ball. If they, if the Raptors can stay healthy, because I know the Bucks have been a little shaky, they will make the NBA Finals. I know it's bold because the Bucks will be having a home court advantage here. It's going to be one heck of a series. But we do predict that the Toronto Raptors will make the NBA Finals. And the question will be, who will they face out of the Western Conference? So it was no surprise to see the Warriors clinch the number one seed in the Western Conference, but it was a surprise to see how narrowly they clinched that number one seed. The Nuggets gave the Warriors quite a bit of a fight for that number one seed, but the Warriors, of course, pulling out in the end, and they got a date against the eight-seeded Clippers, a team that just narrowly made the playoffs as well, a team that many people thought shouldn't have even made the playoffs. And I'm going to go fly out and say the Warriors should take very easy care of the Clippers, Clippers here, but this is a Warriors team, though, that, you know, as you're predicting the NBA playoffs, as you're watching the NBA playoffs, you need to proceed with caution a little bit because this is not the typical Warriors team that we have seen in years past. Now, they are still extremely dominant. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, DeMarcus Cousins, you got Draymond Green, you've got Kevin Durant. I mean, this is a very, very star-studded and stacked Warriors team. But there's something to be said for having so much talent on one team that can kind of cause some problems. This Warriors team, yes, they are the number one seed, but they did have eight 20-point losses this season. So something that's very uncharacteristic from a Steve Kerr coach team and something that we really haven't seen out of the Warriors much in years past. But 
They are the number one seed for a reason. They are still very dominant, still have a lot of talent, and there's something to be said for playoff mode. You hear that term used all the time, LeBron putting it into playoff mode. The Warriors are putting it into playoff mode here. We saw that towards the end of the season. I guarantee you'll see that here in that opening round matchup against the Clippers. Now, the Clippers, a team that many thought were just going to kind of call it quits after shipping off Tobias Harris, but this is a team that is fairly young and has some star-studded talent. There. They have a star veteran in Patrick Beverly. They have Lou Williams, who isn't afraid of really anybody, and Shea Gilgis Alexander, a guy that I'm a huge fan of, a guy that uh, kind of like Lou Williams, isn't afraid of anybody. He's extremely young, but he's ready to go up against the best of the best, and they have that opportunity here in this opening round matchup against the Warriors. But the Warriors, I would not be surprised to see here sweep the Clippers, if not win this game in five games, and they will advance to the second round to take on the winner of the Rockets and the Jazz. And I will say this, this is by far my favorite matchup out of the entire NBA playoffs. This is my favorite matchup, the Rockets and the Utah Jazz. And I'll tell you why, it's because I'm getting to see these two stars and Donovan Mitchell with the Jazz and James Harden with the Rockets. Two very, very fun players to watch. Uh, two very, I think, evenly matched teams, and that's why they're the four seed and the five seed. They're very, very even here. And I will say this, that if there is one team in the Western Conference that can defeat the Warriors and prevent them from getting back to the NBA Finals, it is the Houston Rockets led by James Harden. Now the problem is the, the Rockets have to stay healthy. You have Harden, and they had a very slow start to the season. Then he went on that tear where he had like what was it, 30 points per, uh, 30 points in a game for 30 something straight games. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. And I think if it comes down to the MVP race, it's either James Harden or Giannis Antetokounmpo. But can Chris Paul stay healthy? You know, there were, you know, had Chris Paul stayed healthy, I think it was last year, maybe they would have been in the finals instead of the Warriors. I mean, they're, uh, he's got to stay healthy here. Clint Capella's got to stay healthy. Uh, I know they've added Austin Rivers. This is a Rockets team that has a lot of help, has a lot of talent, and should be able to get past the Jazz. Now, they also still have quite a bit of talent as well. Uh, they have had the best winning percentage since the turn of the new year, only behind the Bucks. So the second best winning percentage in the NBA since January 1st. So this is a team that's getting hot, getting hot at the right time. Donovan Mitchell, obviously a rising star, uh, doing great things there. Joe Ingles, if he can get hot, very dangerous, especially behind the three-point line. And then Derek Favors and Rudy Gobert are playing solid, solid defense, and that's going to be very important against this high-octane Rockets offense. In the end, though, I think the Rockets pull this one out, but I would not be surprised to see this game or this series go to at least six, maybe even seven games here. I'm very, very excited for this one. Expect If you like offense, this is going to be the series for you, but the Rockets end up getting the win over the Jazz to take on the Warriors in the second round. Then we have the Trailblazers and the Thunder here. And if you remember last year, the Trailblazers were also another high seed. I think they were the three seed, maybe a, a four seed, somewhere around there. Got swept by the New Orleans Pelicans. I mean, it was unbelievable. No one, no one really saw that coming. The Trailblazers just did not show up in the playoffs last year. They're certainly out for redemption, and they have another star in, on their team, Damian Lillard, uh, who is just... Really, he's just ridiculous. I love watching that man play. Now, they're going to have to replace him because Joseph uh, Nurkic, who uh, suffered a very, very gruesome leg injury not too long ago. Zach Collins, of course, filling in for him. Going to be very, very important for their big man. Going to, uh, to have some solid big man play when they're going up against a team like the Thunder. Very well-coached team. Billy Donovan knows how to prevent teams from scoring inside. And then, of course, they have Russell Westbrook and Paul George. I'm predicting another early out for the Trailblazers in the playoffs this year. They're not going to get swept by any means, but I think the Thunder, too much talent there, too much experience there. There is something to be said for that, especially when it comes to playoff time, experience. The Thunder pull off an upset over the Trailblazers to advance the second round. So the three seed in the West is going to be out. The Thunder, a team you do not want to see in the playoffs this season. And then you have the Nuggets and the Spurs. The Spurs, I love Greg Popovich. I will tell you that right now. I'm not even a Spurs fan, but I just love Greg Popovich, one of the greatest head coaches in NBA history, in my opinion. 22 straight playoff appearances for the Spurs, and they did it all without their big three. Uh, you know, of course, Tim Duncan, uh, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker. I mean, of course, all of them retiring. First time that they have done it without any any of those players on their roster, uh, and so or, so gr great for them. I mean, a phenomenal coaching job by Greg Popovich. They do have LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan, so very two very talented players there. And the fact they were still able to sneak in here with the seventh seed and do it, doing it so quietly, there's something to be said for that, especially going up against a Nuggets team that, like I said, really gave the Warriors a fight for that one seed. Uh, have kind of been a big time surprise out of the West, kind of like the Nets were in the Eastern Conference, I would say, or maybe even the Bucks if you want to go that far. 
but the Nuggets uh, are going to rely on Nikola Jokic, of course, their star player, and Jamal Murray. Those are their big two right there. And if they can get hot, they're going to be very difficult to stop. People out there say that the Nuggets aren't going to be able to make a run in these playoffs because of their youth, because they're inexperienced, compared to going up against a team like the Spurs, who do have experience. I disagree with that. I think you know they're the number two seed for a reason. They almost got the one seed for a reason. They take care of the Spurs. The Spurs will steal one, maybe two, but in the end, the Nuggets advance to take on the Thunder here. And you could make an argument and say that this is where the Nuggets could fall. You could say, okay, now they're going up against a team that does have more experience in Paul George and Russell Westbrook and Billy Donovan. A very, very talented Thunder team that maybe shouldn't have been the sixth seed. Maybe could have been a little bit higher. But the Nuggets, once again, going to come through clutch here. But keep in mind, a player that I didn't even mention for the Nuggets, Paul Millsap, going to do very, very good things for them. I'm very excited to see how this one turns out. But the Nuggets should advance, I think, to the Western Conference Finals to take on, of course, the Warriors here. I mentioned that the only team that could beat the, the Warriors in the Western Conference would be uh, the Rockets. James Harden, and we, we saw that last year. We saw how big of a fight the Rockets gave the Warriors last year. Uh, and if they can stay fully healthy, maybe they can pull off that upset this year because this has not been the typical Warriors team we have seen in years past. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I think there's something to be said that this Warriors team, even better than they were last year, even though they didn't look like it, have a little bit more talent than they did last year, should advance past the Rockets to take on the Nuggets. This is where the Nuggets do fall. The Warriors... Uh, a couple weeks ago when they faced off against the Nuggets, a game that really kind of determined who would get that one seed, just annihilated Denver. We'll probably do the same here in this series, winning this one, I'm going to say, in five games to advance to another NBA Finals. And once again, a phenomenal job done by Steve Kerr. And really, what can you expect from a team with so much talent? With Steph Curry, with Klay Thompson, DeMarcus Cousins, Ke uh, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green. I mean, there's so much talent on the Warriors. It's almost, I mean, it's really going to be no surprise to see them advance to the NBA Finals. But will they clinch another Another NBA title, this time against the likes of the Toronto Raptors. So our NBA Finals are set. We have the second-seeded Raptors out of the Eastern Conference taking on, of course, the number one seeded Golden State Warriors out of the Western Conference. And if you watched our uh, Western Conference predictions, you heard me say that if there was one team in the West that could beat the Warriors, it would be the Rockets. And if you've listened to some of our live streams in the past, likewise, I've said if there's one team in the East that can take down the Warriors, assuming they get to the NBA Finals, I believe it's the Toronto Raptors, not the Milwaukee Bucks, the Toronto Raptors. And I know that kind of, kind of came as a shock to some people. But in the end, I think the Warriors are going to be too much for the Raptors to handle. The Raptors, plenty of talent, a good, strong, defensive team, in my opinion. Ka uh, Kawhi Leonard doing great things for them in his first year with the Raptors. Now, I think there's a solid chance that he departs Toronto after this season. But if he can stick around, the Raptors are a team that could eventually get back to the NBA Finals and potentially snag an NBA title uh, if he can stick around. Plenty of talent there. Uh, as I've said before, you have Kawhi, you have Kyle Lowry, you have Marcus Gasol. This is a team that is poised and has a very solid chance of winning the Finals this year. The Warriors, though, too much star power, just way too much. This is going to be one good series. You know, in years past, we have seen the Warriors take easy care of the Cleveland Cavaliers, of course, except for a few years ago when they blew that 3-1 to one lead. This year, not going to be the case. You know, the Raptors had very solid success against the Warriors in the regular season, even going to Oracle Arena and beating the Warriors, I think, at least once, maybe twice this season, which is a very, very difficult place to win. But in the end, I think the Warriors are going to clinch yet another NBA title uh, under Steve Kerr. And, and it really is not going to count as much as a surprise here. But this is going to go to six games. I believe the Warriors win this one four games to two, take the Raptors all the way to six games. It's going to be a, a lot of fun. Well, likewise, I see the Raptors take the Warriors all the way to six games, but the Warriors end up clutching yet yeah, another NBA title. And now the question will be, after this championship, you know, people have talked about, will the Warriors dynasty fall apart? Who will leave? Steph Curry? No, not going to leave. But will DeMarcus Cousins be out? Will Kevin Durant be out? Maybe even Klay Thompson. What is going to happen to the Golden State Warriors after this year's NBA Finals, if they can get there and if they can win it. There's a very solid chance the dynasty falls apart, but of course that just remains to be seen, uh, of course, in free agency over the course of this summer. But nonetheless, the NBA Finals uh, and the NBA Playoffs are going to be a lot of fun starting tomorrow, April 13th. You're not going to want to miss a single game, best of seven series, all the way through, all the way up to the NBA Finals, which will conclude in June. So thank you for watching this special preview of the NBA Playoffs. As always, please continue to like, comment, and subscribe and we will see you next time here on the Gridiron Expert.